All right, welcome back. Uh, we're on, what are we on? We're on day nine. Well, time flies when you're having fun, right? Day nine, NTI, uh, summative questions. Uh, I think this would be later this week, maybe Thursday. I'm not sure because we've got, uh, I think the 10th is Friday, maybe. If I'm wrong, it's not the first time, okay? Uh, number 15, Corinne, use cubes that measure one centimeter on each side. Here's a cube measuring one centimeter on each side. Not drawn to scale, obviously. Uh, which of Corinne's prism does not have a volume of 36 cubic centimeters? So uh, again, not, okay? That's what we're looking for. We're not looking for ones that have the volume of 36. We're looking for those that do not have a volume of 36 cubic centimeters. So it's got several different figures there. Uh, you can see them. I'm not going to draw them all, obviously. Uh, but you can count, right? You can count uh, in number C. Well, C, you can just count. Uh, D, you can count the top layer. It's got two layers. It's like a two-layer cake. Okay. And you can figure out which one of those does not have a volume, okay, by counting cubes. Or we know that the rectangular prisms the volume is equal to the length times the width times the height. So you can look at those and figure out the length, width, and height of each one. Which one does not uh, work out to be 36 cubic centimeters? Right. Oh, I did draw a box for this one, though. Very nice. Uh, number 16, find the volume of a box here. I've drawn a box. It could be any box. You draw whatever box you want. Any box. Adrian, count the number of unit cubes that would fit inside it. Okay. I've divided it up into cubes. If you look here, you can see unit cube, very nice unit cube right up here. Okay, this would be a unit cube here. It just means the sides are all one, one centimeter, one foot, one yard, one dog, one cat, whatever. All right? It says, uh, which of the following would not, again, very important, not be uh, a way to find the volume of the box, okay? So we've got to read these very carefully, all four of them, starting with A, and find which one does not uh, work. Find the sum of the number of cubes in the top layer. The sum, sum means total, right? If I added all those up, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, add all those up, and the number of layers. So the sum of the top and the sum plus the sum of how many layers. So it looks to me there's 15 cubes in that top layer and there's five layers. Would it be the sum of those? Possible. I'm not sure. Keep that in mind. Uh, B. Multiply the length, width, and height of the box. That sounds just like the volume. The equation to find volume of rectangular prism, length, width, and height. I think that one, check, that one's good. Uh, multiply the product of the length and height. The product of the length and height. Well, here we have a length times a height, I hear the length, height, okay, I know what that is, the length, height, uh, and multiply that by the, by the width of the box. Could I do the length and height times the width? Or do I have to always do length times width times height? Do they have to be in the same order? I'm thinking on it. What's that? Oh, the commutative property for multiplication? Katie, thank you, yes, very much. You're right, we could probably apply the commutative property uh, of multiplication, right? That means we could change the order, right? It's like going here to Nicholasville, Lexington, or here to Nicholasville, Lexington, and then back. Either way, I can change the order. I'm still going to get the same product, aren't I? Thank you very much. It's very good. Yes, remember that. Okay. Uh, multiply the number of cubes in the top layer by the number of layers. Well, this is awful, awful, like, awful close to number A. Right, number A said the sum of the top layer and the height. This says uh, multiply the number of cubes in the top layer. Again, the number of cubes in the top layer by the number of layers. Yeah, you got to read those closely. Those are hard questions. Right, those are hard questions. Uh, number seventeen. Which of the following expressions is equal to thirty-five thousand? Here's our number, and it's got exponents. Yay! Okay, exponents. We need to remember what exponents are. Here I've written a couple examples, 10 to the second power. These all deal with 10 to the power, some power. 10 to the second power, let's see, is that, remember, is that 10 times 10, 10 to the second power? Is that 10 times 10? No, it's not. It's, no, it's not. No, it's not. Uh, 10 to the second power, is that 10 times 2? Is it 20? 10 to the second power, is that 20? No, 
you're you're right, Vernon. It's not it's not twenty, is it? Okay, ten to the second power is neither one of those. Thank you very much. Ten to the second power that is ten times ten. I have to multiply the base times itself that many number of times. So ten to the second power is ten times ten, which if you're paying along, paying attention there at home, you know that's a hundred. Ooh, got out of the bright light for a second there. Uh, so 10 times 10 uh, is 10 to the second power. 10 to the third power would be 10 times 10 times 10. So you've got to figure out which power of 10 do you need to multiply 35 by to get 35,000. I think we're pretty good there. Oh, gosh, these are so hard. These are really difficult questions. Um, which of the following situations can be modeled with the expression 1 half times 3? And then they give you uh, four different questions and you really got to read those very closely to figure out what you're doing. Uh, I'm going to leave those to you. I don't want to ruin the fun by giving you the answer on this one, but I will talk to you a little bit about this situation, right? One half times three. Sometimes we replace that with one half of three of and multiplication. Same thing we we're talking about fractions, right? One half of three. I know what half of three is. Right, half of three, I know what that is. That's one and a half. Or we can write it certainly as oh, three halves, not three thirds. That would be one, wouldn't it? Or three halves, right? Either one of those. I could think half of three or three halves, right? So you've got to figure out which one of those situations, oh, I should show you the social studies page for a second. Uh, which one of those four situations could be represented by this? One half of three, or one half of three, or three of, if we want to use the community property, yes, Katie, you did, I, yes, yes, Katie, I still hear you. Uh, I can use the community property, and now it looks like three of a half. Same thing, you're still gonna get three halves, or one and a half, uh, three halves. I can think of three of one half, yeah. So I might look for something that has three halves, or I might look for something that has half of three. I don't know. Okay, so you've got to read those very closely. Have fun. Enjoy your day. I hopefully hope it's a nice day. I think if this is Thursday, Thursday's supposed to be a good one. Uh, get this done early so you can get all outside. You can run around. You can play a little basketball, kick a soccer ball, uh, throw a football, uh, play play fetch with Fido. I don't know. Ride your dirt bike. Uh, climb a tree, do something nice outside today, okay? Um, and I will uh, look forward to talking to you again very soon. Um, have a wonderful day.